What's up, YouTube? Official Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 37 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode, uh, we implemented uh, particles and uh, trail effects for our game. The episodes, uh, this episode, we're going to be implementing sound suggested by uh, Peanut uh, O0981, I think it is. Well, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, thank you for your suggestion. And uh, yeah, let's hop right into it. Um, so, uh, if we go on my res folder, you can see I've added, um, you know, sounds from the uh, original Super Mario Bros. Just get some MP3 files and make sure to put them in your res folder. And now we're going to go to our Mario uh, package, or just our main package, com.tutorial.mario. We're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it sounds. Alright. Hurry up. Alright, and uh, we're going to create a private clip, and we're going to call it clip. And uh, of course, we need to import clip. Oh, this is a bit slow today. Uh, just wait a second, let me like close down a few things. Alright, I've closed down a few uh, programs that were open. Uh, it's running a bit faster now, so. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to uh, create a constructor for our sound class, and uh, this constructor will take in a string, and we're going to call it path. And, uh, you know, this is kind of like our uh, sprite or sprite sheet where uh, we had to include a string path as well. So, uh, you know, our uh, game uh, knows what file to uh, select. Also going to create um, three more private methods below our constructor. First, actually, we're going to make them public. First, we called public void play. The second will be called public void close. And the last will be called public void stop all right so uh first of all we need to um you know put everything we're gonna write in this big try method and uh we're going to catch an exception e then e dot print stack trace you know things we've done before oh uh, come on don't be this guy all right thank you print stack trace all right so first we're going to create an audio input stream audio input stream we're going to call it AIS and we're going to set it equal to audio system dot get audio input stream input stream and uh, in here we're going to type get class dot get resource and in here we have to type path up uh, you're probably like realizing this is a uh, similar to what we did uh, when we're you know, in our sprite sheet class, where we had to load up an image, which was our sprite sheet. Now we're going to create an audio format. We're going to call it um, a base format. I'm going to set it to equal to AIS dot get format. Now uh, this is like it's going to be a really long line of code, so uh, just just be prepared. We're going to create another audio format. We're going to call it decode format I'm going to set it equal to a new audio format and now uh, the amount of parameters in here are freaking crazy <laughs> so uh, yeah anyways we're going to type audio format dot encoding dot uh, pcm underscore signed and then we'll type base format format dot get sample rate then 16 and then base format dot get channels then we're going to type base format dot get channels again and this time we're going to times it by two so just put uh an asterisk asterisk then two i'm actually going to like make this into two lines this is pretty damn long all right and then we we'll type base format dot get sample rate and finally false wow this finishes uh this long line of code and uh if you're wondering what the hell does this mean um don't ask me because uh i don't know as well as i said before all right and now we're going to set clip equal to audio system dot get clip actually we need to create another audio input stream um before our clip before we uh, set clip equal to audio system dot get clip, uh, 
So we'll type audio input stream. Uh, we're going to call it DAIS. Um, and we're going to set it equal to audio system dot get audio input stream. This time we're going to put decode format and AIS. And then after clip is equal to audio system dot uh, get clip, we're going to type clip dot open and then uh, we're going to specify what we want to open, uh, which audio input stream we want to open, and this is uh, DACE, so we'll just um, type in DACE. Alright, uh, that's all for the uh, sound constructor, as I said before. No idea what it means, so don't go asking me in the comment section. So now we're going to go into our uh, play method, and we're going to check if um, clip is equal to null. And if clip is equal to null, then we want to return. Because uh, if we play the clip while clip is equal to null, which means clip is equal to nothing, uh, it will try to play clip as it is equal to nothing. And you know, when it when like anything tries to play nothing, it just doesn't work, you know? And now we need to type stop, and you'll see why in a second. And uh, first, and then we have to set um, clip dot set frame position zero. And what this will do, it will uh, set the frame position for our uh, sounds or clip equal to zero. So whenever we play our clip, uh, it would always uh, start playing at the start of our clip. And then we type clip dot um, start, and this actually starts our clip. Now go to public void stop. We're going to be checking if uh, what was it again? Oh, yeah, if clip dot is running, then we want to type clip dot stop. Now what this will do is that uh, it would stop uh, the clip or the sound that is playing in case it's already running. So like, let's say, um, uh, you know, there's something playing in the background and, uh, you know, we just played the sound again. Uh, but you don't want uh, the sounds to overlap each other. So what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to stop the already playing sounds and then uh, play like uh, the new sounds. Alright, now in public void close, we're going to call our stop method, and then we'll just type clip.close to close our clip. Alright, and this is pretty much it for our uh, sound class. So now we're going to go into our game class and actually uh, create the sounds. So now, uh, under all these uh, sprites we created, we can make a public static sound, and uh, you know, we can call it, you know, uh, the sounds we have made in there. So I'll make a public static sound, call it jump. Uh, we're going to make, a, you know, four more public static sounds. And you, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, rename them. All right, and now we're going to go into our uh, init method. And, uh, you know, under this try catch method, we're going to set uh, each sound, you know, equal to an actual sound. So uh, we're going to set jump equal to a new sound. And of course, we have to specify the path. And uh, if you remember, we always have to put the slash first in our path. And we need to make our path a string, you know, like we're doing here. And, do you, and then we just type the name of the sound. So we can type smb jump dot mp3. And uh, by the way, I know what I'm using, like uh, the method I'm uh, using for like playing sound. Um, no, it's compatible with mp3. I think it's compatible with .wav, but um, I have no idea for uh, other formats of sound, so uh, just letting you guys know. Alright, are we going to set Goomba Stomp equal to a new sound? Alright, smb Goomba, Goomba Stomp dot mp3. What's next? Yeah, level complete. Alright, uh, I'm just going to, uh, you know, skip forward to when I've, uh, you know, finished doing all this. Alright, so now that I've uh, finished that, or we can actually uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, make our code play the sounds uh, when it needs to. Alright, so first we're going to do the jump sounds. So, of course, we're going to go into our um, key input method, uh, I mean class. And, uh, you know, we're going to, of course, play the sound whenever we jump. Uh, so, yeah, uh, in your key pressed class, go to your case key event dot vkw. And uh, 
you know, go to if en dot get bounce bottom intersects t dot get bounce, and if in our uh, if our uh, en is not equal to jumping if statement, uh, we're going to play the sound there. So we're going to type game dot jump dot play. All right, now we're going to go to our entity class, and so we're going to play the sound where we lose a life. In our die method, in our entity class, uh, in our uh, if statement where we're checking if uh, you know our, our ID is equal to ID dot player, uh, we're going to type game dot lose a life dot play. Now we're going to go into our game class and make the theme song play. You know whenever we've uh, started our level. All right, so um, go to our tick method in our game class. In if death screen time is greater than or equal to 180, and then uh, we want to play, um, what is it? Uh, oh uh, yeah. Oh sorry about that. Theme song dot play, and I uh, notice we don't have to type game dot theme song as we are already in our game class. Right now we're going to play the sound line uh, that plays when we stomp a goomba. So after that, go into your uh, player class in your uh, com dot tutorial dot mario dot entity dot mob package. All right, so in your player class, in your plays tick method, go to your entity for loop and go to uh, this else if method. Uh, you know, it's checking else if e dot get id is equal to id dot goomba, id dot tower boss, or id dot plant. And uh, you can see this line of code here, uh, where it says if e dot get id is not equal to id dot tower boss e dot die. And of course, this will get called whenever we, you know, stomp on one of our uh, enemies so uh, we're going to make uh, this if statement a method and at the bottom of this if statement we're going to uh, you know play the sound where we stomp our goomba so type game dot goomba stomp dot play and uh, one last sound uh, it's the level complete sound so um, right so if you go to your public static void switch level method in your game class um, we're going to actually stop well, we're going to close our theme song sounds because, you know, when we get our flag, we want our, um, you know, uh, level complete song, I mean sounds, to play and to not overlap with the theme song. All right. Because, you know, if it overlaps with the theme song, then it'll sound a bit weird. So after that, we're going to type game.levelcomplete.play. Alright, so uh, hopefully this all works. Let's try it out. Alright guys, so I just spent um, 20 minutes trying to figure out why the sounds won't bloody work. And, uh, you know, I realised the dot .wav sounds I was using, um, it actually, um, you know, is uh, something to do with, uh, you know, the wav sounds not having, like, enough, enough depth or something. I've no idea because I don't really know that much about like audio and stuff as I said before so uh yeah I used uh you know different uh, uh wav files that like weren't taken from the internet and they worked so um I, I've changed the uh jump uh file so and so uh, yeah by the way I actually made a mistake saying um you know the sounds were compatible with um a uh, uh you know dot mp3 files they're actually not uh they're only compatible with wav files the way i'm using i heard there's this ex there's this extension out there which i uh, can like allow mp3 files to be played but like uh the way i'm using it only supports dot wav files so yeah i'm um, sorry about the mistake i made before so yeah as i said i only changed uh the jump sound so what should happen is that um Whenever I jump, it should play the sounds. All right, so um, uh, you know, I took out my headphones so you guys can hear the sound being played. All right, so this means that my microphone will be worse for the rest of the video. But uh, yeah. Um, by the way, I'm like I'm doing this because Camtasia won't let me record um, uh, sound audio and uh, my voice together, which is kind of annoying. All right, so I will start the game. Turn my volume up for this. And if we jump. You can see it uh, makes a little jumping sounds. So uh, I've uh, completed this episode. All I really need to do is, uh, you know, replace uh, the old sounds I was using with uh, the new sounds that actually work. So yeah, 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, new episode. Uh, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program a game in Java, please let them know about this uh, channel. I would highly appreciate it. Um, if you have a Twitter account, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.